Hi, Alan Stratton from Eswood Turns. When I contemplated a project to do for Easter, I had a problem because Easter is really two almost opposites. There's the spiritual side with the mission of Jesus Christ, and then there's the new beginnings, the spring side. And it's kind of hard to turn a project that represents the spiritual side. So I'll settle for the new beginning side. My wife insisted that I do a small Easter basket. This is it. It is turned as an Easter egg and then the sides cut out to form a handle and eggs put inside. It is actually quite nice. I congratulate my wife on her insight. But for its size, maybe next time I'll have to make a bigger one because this one is too small to fit a peep in. But let's go ahead and make this basket. I've mounted a block of walnut harvested in Texas many years ago. Definitely dry. I'm using a stub center on the spindle and a standard live center. Rough rounding is not my favorite activity, but it does go quickly. I need a dovetail tenon on both ends. Then switch to shark jaws for my scroll chuck and part the block in two. It's much safer to part from a chuck mount than if mounted between centers. No chance to bind. Now I've mounted the big end of the egg in my chuck. I'll hollow it first. I'll first remove a lot with a spindle gouge cutting outward through the grain. I need more practice at this technique so I stopped a bit short of a complete hollow and switched to a round nose scraper. I'm using a square carbide cutter to cut the straight sides of the mortise. Then sand and finish the interior. Now for the exterior with a spindle gouge. I'll do some rough shaping at this point, but stop short from finishing it. I intend later to put a small concave hollow on the bottom so it can sit straight on a surface. Next, I've swapped over to the egg top. The first thing to do is to match the tenon to the mortise in the bottom part of the egg. A typical process. Then mount the big end onto the tenon and do some turning between centers, but not much at this point. When I started to hollow, I had a bad catch that messed up the tenon. I had to shorten it, then on to hollowing. Nothing fancy here. I did some with my carbide cutter, some with my spindle gouge, and some with a round nose scraper. I will not sand the entire interior, just the portion near the joint. I'll sand the rest after I carve the handle. Now I can finish the big end of the egg. This will be the bottom of my Easter egg basket. A little tooling, then sand the big end. Then quickly sign the bottom before applying shellac friction polish to the base. Now I'll part off the top end. Since the tenon is on this part, I can reverse it onto my chuck jaws to clean up the top before sanding and finishing. If this were a box egg, I'd be finished now, but it's not. I'll glue the two pieces together now and let dry. Now to carve the handle. I've applied tape around the bottom and across the top. I'll carve out the two sides of the top. I've wrapped some old router pad around the egg and gently mounted it into my shark jaws. From here, I'll carve with a proxon with a coarse rasp cutter. The tape marks my edges. Then a lot of hand sanding to clean up the edges before applying finish.
Finally, I can buff my egg to a nice shine. This is a cute little egg basket. I'll fill it with jelly beans, malt balls, and peeps, just in time for Easter. I just wish my egg basket had something to do with Jesus Christ and the main reason to celebrate re Easter. We'll see you again next week with another wood turning video. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, and tell your friends. Always wear your full face shield. Goggles are not enough protection. Until next week, this is Alan Stratton from As Wood Turns. Let's keep on turning.